All right, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to create a custom brush from a photograph. Now, you can use this technique pretty much on any interesting shape you find in a photograph. Um, in this case, we're going to do a leaf. Actually, it's an oak leaf. Let's slide this over here so you can see. We're going to take this photograph of this oak leaf and turn it into a custom brush that we can use over and over and over for whatever we need it for. So, first thing I need to do is this stem right here looks a little long, so I'm actually going to get my eraser tool and shorten that up a little bit just like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I need to go ahead and remove all the color information here. So I'm going to just go to mode grayscale. And that will give me a grayscale image because when we turn this into a custom brush it's going to look at it as a black and white image. So whatever is black in your brush is going to be 100% opaque and whatever is gray will certainly have some transparency to it. So, And that's what we want in this case because we want the brush to have some texture of the leaf. We don't want it to be a flat oak leaf shape. We want it to have some texture so we're going to leave those gray values there. But we are going to darken them up just a little bit. So I'm going to go under image to adjustment, levels, and I'm going to grab my dark slider and just kind of push this over a little bit, making that just a little bit darker. Not too much, though. I want to maintain some of that detail in there. I'm going to hit OK. Now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to grab my magic wand tool. And I'm just going to click anywhere in this background area and select that entire area. Now, I want my leaf selected, obviously, so I need to inverse the selection. So I'm going to go under Select Inverse, just like that. Now, go ahead and I'm going to turn this into a custom brush, quite simply, just simply go under Edit, Define Brush Preset, and here we'll give it a name, just call this Oak Brush 1, and we'll hit OK there. Now because we've gone ahead and saved this as a brush preset, I don't need this file anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and close it, just like that. And we'll go under File, New. We're going to make a whole new file. And we'll leave that at 10 inches. Awfully big there. I'm going to zoom out. Just like this. Now, bring my layers palette in over here. Just like that. Now, I need to go and find my new brush and see what we've got here. So I'm going to go and select my brush tool. And right up here in the up to top right, I'm going to select my brush options here. And here we have our brush palette. Let's go and see if we can find that brush we just made, which is right there. Click on that. And you can see right here in the preview window, by default, it's giving me just a straight, you know, up and down basic brush stroke there. So we want to change that. We don't want it to be that boring. So first thing I'm going to do is click on Shape Dynamics here. You can already see we're starting to get some changes here. If we highlight that name there, you can see we've got all these options here. We've got size jitter, which I'm going to go ahead and leave at 100%. And the angle, if I move this back and forth, you can see we're getting different types of angles there. If I bring it back over here, it's just like it was before. But we want the angles to really kind of mess around there. And the roundness jitter, basically, it's like it's bending it in three dimensions almost. It's just kind of kind of rotating it in a three dimensional sense right there. And what I need to do now is go back up to this brush tip shapes uh, window here and I'm going to space this out a little bit. If I move my spacing slider over you can see I get some distance in there. I don't want too much. Just like that. Now one more thing I need to do is you can see they're all at different angles and kind of different sizes and everything, but they're all kind of along the same path, which is really going to look kind of weird. So, we need to go and activate our scattering. Now in the scattering tab, I'm going to make sure I've got my both axes checked, so it will basically scatter in all, dire all directions. And I'm going to increase that scatter just a little bit. I'm going to increase that count because uh, I want it to lay a little bit more down. You can already see what we're starting to get here. It's a really nice blowing leaves effect here, which is pretty cool. 
and we'll just mess with that. Now, what I'm going to do here now is go over to this Color Dynamics tab. I'm going to click on that. And we're not going to see any change on this because this is going to affect the colors that we're going to paint in that we're going to set here in just a minute. But inside this tab, if I highlight this, you can see we've got all these settings here. Now the only one I'm really concerning with myself with is the foreground and background jitter. Now basically what this does, it's going to take the foreground and background colors I set and it's going to alternate that color as I paint these leaves onto the screen and you'll see what that does in just a minute. Now obviously you can go back and change these settings once you do something, but for starters we're just going to play with these settings and see what we get. So I'm just going to move this brush palette out of the way for a minute, and we're going to go in here into our color swatches here. I'm just going to click on the foreground color and get our color palette here, and I'm just going to get kind of a brownish color here, right about like that. Okay, I'm just going to get my little tool here and flop these colors and click and select that white color that's been brought to the front and we're gonna give that more of a reddish color going for those really fall looking colors there and there we have both our foreground and background set and now if I just go on my palette here and just start painting those settings you can see right away we're getting a really neat effect here. Now you can see, if I zoom in here just a little bit, you can see we're getting that texture, that same exact texture from the original leaf on there. And that's based on that grayness, those gray areas that were part of our original selection that we made into the custom brush. So you can see like that. Now if I go and got my brush and paint it a little bit more and you can do all kinds of things with this. You can actually change these colors, do whatever you want and just play out in. And I'm, because I'm using a pressure sensitive tablet, if I press down my leaves actually get bigger. If I just press really lightly, they're really small. So, so let's assume I like that brush and I want to use this once again perhaps sometime. Well that's real simple. Instead of having to go in and change all these settings all over again, if I've taken this time to go ahead and set this, I want to save them. So all I need to do is go up here to my brush presets. And we'll just go into this little pull-up menu and go to new tool preset. And we can just give this a new name. As you can see I've already got a couple of other brushes already set. We'll just call this Oak Brush 3. And hit OK. And there's our tool right there. So if I go and get a new brush and do something else, maybe I'll you know, paint a little color in here. If I wanted to maybe put some text in here or something like that. But now if I s decided I want to put some more leaves back in here, what, we, what you'll see happen, let me move this out of the way, is if I go back and select that brush, there it is back to its default settings how we had it before. But remember we saved it as a preset. So all I have to do here is go to Oak Brush 3. And you can see right here in the brush options, there's all our settings that we had before. And all I gotta do is just paint once again. It's so really quite simple. So there you have it. So there is a really neat way to take something from a photograph, create a brush out of it, and make it a preset, and it's there for you to use anytime you need it.